Hello, I'm John. I'm Bergen. And today we are going to preach in pajamas. We are, in fact, both wearing pajamas. <clears throat> and today we are going to start by reading Joel, and then at the end we'll talk about it. So, it is my job to read Joel chapter 1. So here we go. The word of the Lord came to Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, you elders. Give ear all inhabitants of the land. Has such a thing happened in your days or in the days of your fathers? Tell your children of it and let your children tell their children. Let me just, sorry. Um, <clears throat> and their children to another generation. What the cutting locust left, the swarming locust has eaten. What the swarming locust left, the hopping locust has eaten. And what the hopping locust left, the destroying locust has eaten. Awake, you drunkards, and weep, and wail, all you drinkers of wine, because of the sweet wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation has come up against my land, powerful and beyond number. Its teeth are lion's teeth, and it has fangs of a lioness. It has laid waste my vine and splintered my fig tree. It has stripped off the bark and thrown it down. Their branches are made white. Lament like a virgin wearing sackcloth. For the bridegroom of her youth, the grain offering and the drink offering are cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests mourn and the ministers of the Lord. The fields are destroyed, the ground mourns. Because the grain is destroyed and the wine dries up, the oil languishes. Be ashamed, O tillers of the soil. Wail, O vine dressers. For the wheat and the barley, because the harvest of the field has perished. The vine dries up, the fig tree languishes, pomegranate and palm and apple and all the trees of the field are dried up. The gladness dries up from the children of man. Put on sackcloth and lament, O priests. Wail, O ministers of the altar. Go in, pass the night in sackcloth, O ministers of the word, because the grain offering and drink offering are withheld from the house of God. Consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land to the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is near, and as destruction from the Almighty it comes off. It is cut off, sorry, is not the food cut off before our, our, our eyes, joy and gladness from the house of our God. The seed shrivels under the clods. The storehouses are desolate. The granaries are torn down because the grain has dried up. How the beasts groan. The herds of cattle are perplexed because there is no pasture for them. Even the flocks of sheep suffer. To you, O Lord, I call. For fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness. And flames have, have burned. All the trees of the field, even the beasts of the field, pant you, because the water brooks are dried up, and fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness. All right, now Joel chapter 2. Blow a trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm on the holy mountain. Let the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness there is spread upon the mountains. A great and powerful people, their like has never been before, nor will, be there, nor will be again after them. Through the years of all generations, fire devours before them, and behind them a flame burns. The land is like the Garden of Eden before them, but behind them a desolate wilderness, and nothing escapes them. Their appearance is like the appearance of horses and like war horses they run. As with the rumbling of chariots they leap on the tops of the mountains like the crackling of a flame of fire devouring the stubble. Like a powerful army drawn up for battle. Before them peoples are in anguish and faces grow pale. Like warriors, they charge. Like soldiers, they scale the wall. They march each on his way. They do not swerve from their paths. They do not 
jostle one another. Each marches in his path. They burst through the weapons and are not halted. They leap upon the city. They run upon the walls. They climb into the houses. They enter through the windows like a thief. The earth quakes before them. The heavens tremble. The sun and the moon are darkened. The stars withdraw their shining. The Lord utters his voice before his army, for his camp is exceedingly great. He who executes his word is powerful. For the day of the Lord is great and very awesome. Who can endure it? Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning, and render and rend your hearts, not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not, he will not return and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, consecrate the con congregation, assemble the others, Elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber between the vestibule and the altar. Let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach. And by word among the nations, why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The Lord answered and said to his people, Behold, I am sending to you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied, and I will no more make you a reproach among the nations. I will remove the, non, the northerner far from you and drive him to a parched and desolate land, his vineyard into the eastern sea and his rear guard into the western sea, the stretch and the foul smell of him will rise, for he has done great things. Fear not, O land, and be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Fear not, you beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The trees bear its fruit. The fig tree and the vineyard give their full yield. Be glad, O children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the latter rain before you. As before, the threshing floors shall be full of grain, the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten. The hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army, which I will send which I sent among you. I shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dwelt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again put to shame. You shall know I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and that there is none else and all my people shall never again be put to shame. And, I will, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall <coughs> prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and the female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and it shall come to pass that every one who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount, for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be those who escape, as the Lord had said, and among the survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Bergen. I'm going to finish with Joel chapter 3. By the way, thank you to everybody who's joining. Hope you all are doing well today. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all the nations 
and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will enter into judgment with them there. On behalf of my people and my heritage, Israel, because they have scattered them among the nations and have divided up my land and have cast lots for my people and have traded a boy for a prostitute and have sold a girl for wine and have drunk it. What are you to me, O Tyre and Sidon and all the regions of Philistia? Are you paying me back for something? If you are paying me back, I will return your payment on your own head, swiftly and steadily. For you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried my rich treasures into your temples. You have sold the people of Judah and Jerusalem to the Greeks in order to remove them far from their own border. Behold, I will stir them up from the place to which you have sold them, and I will return your payment on your own head. I will sell your sons and daughters into the hands of the people of Judah, and they will sell them to the Sabaeans, to a nation far away, for the Lord has spoken. Proclaim this among the nations. Consecrate for war. Stir up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am a warrior. Hasten and come, all you surrounding nations, and gather yourselves there. Bring down your warriors, O Lord. Let the nations stir themselves up and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. Put in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Go in, tread, for the winepress is full. The vats overthrow, overflow, for their evil is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valleys of decision. For the day of the Lord is near, in the day of decision. The sun and the moon are darkened. And the stars withdraw their shine. The Lord roars from Zion and utters his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and earth quake. But the Lord is a refuge for his people. A stronghold to the people of Israel. So you shall know that I am the Lord your God who dwells in Zion, my holy mountain. And Jerusalem shall be holy. And strangers shall never again Pass through it. And in that day, the mountains shall drip sweet wine, and the hills shall flow with milk. And all the steam beds of Jerusalem, uh, of Judah, shall flow with water. And the fountain shall come forth from the house of the Lord, and water from the valley of Shittim. And Egypt shall become a desolation, and Edom a desolate wilderness, for the violence done to the people of Judah because they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall be inhabited forever, and Jerusalem to all generations. I will avenge their blood, blood I have not avenged. For the Lord dwells in Zion. So that's the end of Joel chapter 3. Uh, jo Joel is just those three chapters. And before we talk much more about this, I'd like to say that um, that section at the end where it's talking about the return of wealth to, Jerusalem, to Judah. Um, some language in there is a little bit confusing, but really what it is saying is, is there's going to be so much, like when it says mountains will drip sweet wine, that's figurative, it's just saying there's going to be an abundance of wealth in, in Judah and Jerusalem when God um, returns judgment uses on the pictures. peoples. It uses pictures. To, it, it gives you an image of the blessing that God will get, you know, it's, it's the example, um, or picture of it, like the land flowing with milk and honey when they go yeah. into the land. It's something, it's something good that God's going to do for his people. It's showing the prosperity that they're going to get. Cause right now when they talk about the locusts, it's kind of like a famine going on here. Yeah. So what would you say was like the first thing, the first thing that stood out to you as you read Joel, what would you say that that was? You know, it's a tough time. It is a tough time time stuff is going on there are people in the land that are struggling right now the locusts are coming um one of the things that comes to my mind is uh, i go back to deuteronomy 
when Moses is retelling the people's history. He's retelling the, the story of what they had just been doing. Because when we, when we talk about the law in that time, mm -hmm. the people had really been messing up. You know, we have the incident of the golden calf. They completely reject what God had told them to do and they take their own weave. weave. Then we have the whole system of numbers where the people are completely doing whatever they want. They're whoring themselves to other, other gods, other, other nations. You know, they're going away from God. And Moses is warning them. So the first thing that stuck out to me was the tell children. Tell your children of this. Remind them. Warn them. Tell them that this is what happens when we're not doing what yeah. the Lord says. This is, is what's going to happen. You know, God says, follow me, obey my commandments, grow close, blessings. Disobey, curses. And that list of curses is a long list, John, that I, yeah. would, not, I would not appreciate, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, I would say one of the first things that stood out to me um, was this idea of the day of the Lord being an awful day. Um, so <clears throat> if you remember, if you've read a whole lot of scripture before, uh, a common trend is that the people of God are expecting him to act in these mighty ways, but because they're acting horrible and disobedient, um, the way, yeah, comfy is good. Um, because they're acting horrible and disobedient, the day of the Lord is never what they want it to be. Um, we're going to get more into this as we go into Amos in the future. <clears throat> but uh, it mentions that the, the day of the Lord is darkness and gloom. And it uses the word a day of clouds and thick darkness. So they were expecting the day of the Lord to be this awesome day. Um, like we see in the end where God punishes all of these nations that have been have been doing harm to them. But Amos compares the day of the Lord to like someone is, um, is running from a bear and then he gets met by a lion. And then he starts running from the lion, goes inside his house, and like finally rests and puts his hand up against the wall and a snake bites his hand. Because it's, it, they, they were going from something else and something worse came. Mm -hmm. And that was what the day of the Lord actually was like, but it was not what they wanted. <clears throat> so I would say that that was what, what really stood out to me as we read through this is that relationship between the day of the Lord. Um, another one is in chapter one, when it's talking about the locust, <clears throat> the interesting thing to me is like, because God is punishing them with famine, they can't perform their sacrifices and their rituals. Um, it's like, it's almost like God is stopping them from doing the things that he commanded them to do to serve him. Mm -hmm. Well, if you, if you continue to read, you look here, bring your hearts back to me. Um, we'll see, we'll see coming up in the Bible as you read it. He, did, he does not take pleasure in those sacrifices anymore. What he really wants is that personal relationship. He really wants your heart to be drawn. You know, many people, they separate the Old and the New Testament because they think the New Testament is all about the heart and the Old Testament is just rules. But that's not true. If you look back in the chapters with those rules, at the end, it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, you know, with all your, with all your soul, with all your strength. He wants your heart to draw close to him. He wants that not to be just an outward action or an outward act. If we were going to be prepared for that day of the Lord, for that judgment, for that coming, then our hearts need to be close to him. Our yeah. hearts need to be drawn to him. And that also helps us with the blessing. If our hearts are drawing close, then we know how to obey what God's will is, right? We know what his, his will for us is. We know what his commands are. But if we're far away, then we don't know. You know, that brings me to a passage in Jeremiah. Jeremiah talks about a tree planted in the wilderness doesn't have that that water that it needs it doesn't have what it needs it's far away it's parched but a tree planted by the by the river it is flourished you know it is it is being fed it's constantly it doesn't worry when drought comes because it's right there its roots are in what it needs to be in just like us our hearts need to be rooted in the lord yeah yeah one of the one of the particular phrases that <clears throat> that stood out to me was where it said rend your hearts and not your garments so mm -hmm. Um, throughout the Bible, you'll see this image of when something goes wrong, people will tear their clothes. They'll, um, I, <clears throat> it was just, it was a thing that they, it was a way that they showed mourning. Mm -hmm. Um, they would tear their clothes. They would put ash on their heads. And <clears throat> basically what God is saying is don't tear up your clothes or don't tear up your clothes to serve me, tear up your heart, change it to be in line with me. Love me, give me your heart, not your clothes. Yeah, he doesn't want the outward. He wants the inward. Yeah. One other thing that I thought really stuck out, which kind of made me laugh a little bit, if that's good, but uh, here in, in Joel chapter 1, even the beasts of the field pant for you because the water brooks are dried up and the fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness. You know, God compares Israel in the beginning to stubborn beasts. You know, mm -hmm. they, they, they have stubborn, I can't, I can't move their neck, they're stiff-necked. 
you know. But even these beasts, they pant for you, Lord. They need you. See, even even the world's creatures, even the world's um, animals, nature, it needs the Lord. Everything needs the Lord. Everything relies on it. So when the Lord takes away his blessing and brings curses, everything is affected by it. Yeah. The entire world is affected, you know. <clears throat> that's that's one thing that stood out. We need to be keeping our hearts close to him. We need to be in in our closest relationship we can to him or curses come and they affect more than just us. Yeah. They affect our children. They affect generations. They affect nations as you see here. What what's been going on, you know, the the people of Israel failed. They they decided to disobey God. They started doing human sacrifice, different things like that. What happened? They were sent to another nation. They were enslaved, you know. Then they were brought back, but the the point is is we need to we need to be working on that relationship with God. It's all about the heart. It's all about what's in here and not holding back, not just having that outward pretend relationship or looking good at church per se, but it's it's about having that relationship with him. And it's so important because that's the only thing that saves us, you know, that relationship. <clears throat> yeah, so um so if you watched last week, one of the things I talked about was how when when we sin, when we're given to that, it doesn't just affect us and it affects those around us. It affects, I mean, it affects the world around us. It affects nature even. Um, and that's what we see in this text. So uh, we're going to start wrapping things up, but let's talk about, um, I guess, what this what this has to do with today. And one of the things that I'm thinking about is um, the way that we normally serve God uh, as, I guess, as our culture as a people. Um, it was greatly disrupted recently. But is does God still have our hearts in that? Are we still rending our hearts to God in that? You know, I've heard a lot of complaining um, about the coronavirus and about how we've had to go online. And it's, it's, I'm not saying I haven't been in the complaining party sometimes. Yeah. It's been hard. It's been tough. There were, there were plans that people had, projects they wanted to do, outreach stuff that they were planning, and it just all got thrown out the window. But there's one, there's one verse that I really thought about when it, when it comes to hard times. It's rejoice in the Lord in all times. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.16 is, is what my heart went to. We need to be rejoicing in all times no matter yeah. what because we look forward to what God's going to do. You know, God has a plan. God, God is working all things for good. So we look back to what God has done and look forward to what he's going to do. And that can help us, <clears throat> help us look through that. Because like John's saying, it can be extremely hard all right so we want to each give a closing word my closing word would be like he said rend your hearts not your garments give give your heart and give your being to god that is that is what he wants more than he wants you to go sing songs on sunday that's what he wants more than he wants you to read your bible every day and those things are do those things too those are things that are definitely related to giving god your heart but he wants your heart he wants your actions he wants your whole being I would say, just like John, we are dependent on the Lord for everything. Yeah, He's our breath. He is our life. He is everything. Without him, destruction, famine, curses, and death. With him, life eternally serving him in heaven with his son. Yeah. So cling to it like it's your only option because it is. Simply, simply put, cling to it like it's your only option because it it is. It's the yeah. only, it's the only choice. Without it, <clears throat> curses, destruction. Read the, read through, read through uh, um, Isaiah, and just, just read through what's going on in that book, and you will see without God, it, what it's like. Yeah. You know, fearing the Lord is fearing to be without Him. So, that would be my last word. Cling to Him yeah. as tightly as you can because He's our only hope. All right. So thank you guys for joining in. Uh, Bergen is going to share this on his places, I think, so that'll be cool. Um, and I would love your guys' feedback. So go ahead and leave some comments if you like doing this with an extra person, if you thought that was a little more fun. And let me know what you thought. You guys have a nice day. Bye. Bye.